Um, we'll um, continue on with the next presentation and take questions at the end. Um, our next speaker is Vanna Sipsa. Uh, Vanna is a lecturer of epidemiology and preventative medicine at Athens uh, University Medical School. Her research interests include uh, epidemiology and mathematical modeling of infectious diseases, including HIV and viral hepatitis. And she's currently the secretary of the International Society of Clinical Biostatistics. And the title of her talk is Trends in HIV-1 Incidents During an Outbreak Among Injecting Drug Users in Athens, Greece, Results of a Serobehavioral Survey, the Aristotle Program. Thank you very much. Uh, Greece has experienced for many years a low-level stable epidemic of HIV infection. Uh, uh, there were very few, it was mainly concentrated on men having sex with men. And each year, the number of cases diagnosed uh, in injecting drug users was very low. It ranged from 10 to 20 cases per year. However, since the first months of 2011, it was apparent that there was an outbreak in this population. And at the end of that year, the number of cases diagnosed in 2011 was 16 times higher as compared to 2010. Aristotle program was an intervention that was implemented in response to this outbreak. Uh, primary aims of this, programs, uh, of this program uh, were to screen as fast as possible, as many injecting drug users as possible in Athens metropolitan area where the outbreak was taking place, to provide them prevention, treatment and care as designated by international organizations, and eventually to contribute to the decrease of transmission in this population. People who were eligible to participate were, were uh, persons who had injected drugs in the past 12 months, lived in the area of Athens, and were 18 years old uh, or older. In order to be able to uh, recruit this hard-to-reach population, we used uh, respondent-driven sampling, RDS, which is a chain referral method that uses monetary incentives uh, to recruit people, and also people receive monetary incentives to, re to uh, recruit other people, uh, uh, to draw people from their network and recruit them to the program. Uh, during Aristotle, we collected blood samples and tested them for HIV infection. We also performed uh, lag testing to identify recent infections, and we also performed uh, interviews using an extended structure questionnaire that was based on the questionnaire of the National HIV Behavioral Surveillance System for IDUs that is performed in the US. Very briefly, once participants arrived at Aristotle site, uh, we checked for eligibility, asked for their consent. If informed consent was obtained, we collected blood samples and performed interviews. At the end of this process, people were paid their primary incentive, received three coupons to recruit other people, I received a pack, a pack of 25 low dead space syringes with injecting paraphernalia and leaflets with uh, information, and they were asked to return a few days later to, correct, uh, to collect the HIV test result. And in case they were found to be HIV positive, there was dedicated staff uh, that was uh, helping them, uh, responsible for referral to antiretroviral uh, treatment, and also for priority referral to opioid substitution treatment, because in Athens there is a waiting list to enter this kind of programs of several years, but if you are found to be HIV infected, you have priority. The program was designed uh, in five consecutive rounds of uh, respondent-driven sampling. In each round, the target sample size was approximately 1,400 people. Uh, there was a short break in between these rounds. Uh, people could participate in multiple rounds, but only once in each round. So we ended up with more than 7,000 questionnaires and blood samples from 3,300 unique persons. Uh, so this means that more than half of our injecting drug users had participated in multiple rounds. Uh, for some of them, we have three, four, or five uh, blood samples and questionnaires collected over time. Concerning the prevalence estimates per round, the, the red bars uh, show the crude estimates of HIV prevalence, whereas the blue bars are uh, the estimates after adjusting for this RDS design. So if you look at these blue bars, you will see that uh, fortunately the prevalence did not decrease during the program and ranged from 14 to 16 percent approximately. 
concerning incidents, which is the topic of this presentation, uh, we estimated incidents during Aristotle using re da data from repeat blood testing. Uh, all participants who had at least two uh, blood samples and who tested negative in their first sample were included in this analysis, approximately 1,500 injecting drug users. For 45 of them, a negative result was followed by a positive result, so we had 45 seroconversions. So the incidence rate was 4.5 new infections per 100 persons per year. But what is more interesting to observe is the trends of in incidence during the program. So in the first four months of the program, incidence was 7.8 and decreased to a year later to 1.7 uh, per 100 person years. Uh, this is a decrease of 78%. A similar estimate was obtained when incidence was uh, estimated under a different method using lag testing. In this case, the decrease was estimated to be something like 81%. We further attempted to explore and estimate what was the incidence of HIV infection before our program. Uh, this, is not, uh, this cannot be done using uh, these multiple blood samples as the program was not uh, in effect yet. So we used a model that was fit to the prevalence estimates that we had available at that time. In this model, we try uh, to model the transition of injecting drug users from this susceptible state to the infectious and the, the infected and infectious state. This transition is governed by the incidence rate, so by fitting this model to prevalence data, we can estimate the incidence. Before Aristotle, in, two, in years 2010 and 2011, prevalence estimates were available from the Greek uh, National Treatment Monitoring Center. So in 2010, prevalence was 1.7%. In 2011, it was 10%. And in 2012, uh, the estimate that we had obtained from Aristotle was 19.5, the crude estimate. So by fitting the model to this data, we obtained uh, an estimate for the incidents before Aristotle. This is a solid line that is shown in this graph. The dashed line is what the model projects uh, in the absence of Aristotle. And the solid line with the black squares is what we have actually estimated during Aristotle. So at the end of 2013, the incidence was 88% uh, lower than that was projected by the model in the absence of um, this intervention and other possible changes, such as, for example, change in the behavior of injecting drug users. In this graph, you can see the monthly number of cases uh, uh, reported among injecting drug users since before the outbreak, during the outbreak, and until the first months of 2014, you can see uh, a peak when Aristotle had started in the number of diagnosed cases. Uh, the number of new cases reported in the first months of 2014 uh, is low. You can see also the timing that the different interventions were put into place. The first response was to boost op opioid substitution treatment programs and needle and syringe programs, and Aristotle was implemented uh, a few months later. Another question that we would like to assess is if it is possible to separate out the effect of this intervention from that of other concurrent interventions uh, during the outbreak uh, of opioid substitution treatment and needle and syringe programs. Uh, this is not an easy question to answer. We tried to assess it indirectly. So we, we had questions uh, in this questionnaire that I mentioned before. Uh, asking our participants whether they were currently on opioid substitution treatment program. You can see here uh, the proportion reporting per round that the, they were on OST. Uh, from 11.5%, this reached to 25%. Uh, it's surely an increase in the coverage, but still, uh, I guess you will agree with me that the coverage was suboptimal. Concerning needle and syringe programs, uh, there was a question uh, addressed to our uh, participants whether they had received free syringes in the past month. Uh, the red bar indicates a proportion of injecting drug users reporting that they have not recent received syringes. And actually from this figure you will see that this proportion uh, is getting worse instead of uh, improving. So during uh, Aristotle, there, there doesn't seem to be a scale-up of needle and syringes programs. So overall, uh, during uh, 
uh, Aristotle program, we have seen a large uh, decline in HIV incidence. Uh, the coverage of OST was, uh, has increased during that time, but still it was not uh, at, at the rates, at the level that, we, uh, that would explain such a decline in incidence. Uh, we believe that the program had an impact in this large decline. Uh, during Aristotle, we have seen that injecting drug users started adopting safer injecting uh, practices. And those who were diagnosed to be uh, positive also started practicing safer sexual practices. Uh, there was also a very large increase in the awareness of seropositivity. From 20% in the first round, uh, in the last round, almost 90% of seropositive were aware of their seropositivity. Aristotle was not just screening, it was inter inter integrated uh, intervention where uh, injecting drug users could have counseling, uh, linkage to care, uh, there was uh, a psychology, social workers, many services provided to them. And uh, a possible explanation could be that it has functioned as an induction type of network intervention uh, in which uh, uh, that stimulates this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, interaction and helps in the diffusion of information and behavioral change. Uh, the program has uh, been completed. Uh, we try uh, very hard to start it again because we believe that our population, but also population not only in Greece but in other countries, need this kind of integrated uh, prevention programs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vanna.